Hey guys, so this video is on balancing chemical reactions, well, chemical reactions and how to balance them. <clears throat> so, um, one of the, um, kind of a, a loose bit of information here that's actually pretty important is we need to know um, how, whether or not a chemical reaction happened. Because we can't see the atoms themselves, um, we have to rely at this level on our eyes and our, our, our senses. So, um, if you see or observe any of these, then it's pretty good evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. The color changes, goes from one color to the other, or colorless to a color. Formation of a precipitate, if you see a solid forming. Now this doesn't necessarily mean a big chunk of like a rock. A lot of times these reactions are happening in solution, and if, you, if the solution becomes cloudy, that's a solid, little tiny pieces of solid. Um, evolution of a gas. If you see bubbles or if you smell an odor, that's evidence that a chemical reaction has happened um, and has evolved gas. Heat absorption, or actually or emission. Um, so if the, uh, the container that the, the reaction is occurring in gets either hotter or colder, you, know, you feel it and see, um, that's, sometimes that's the only indication that you have that a chemical reaction happened, but it's, an, it's a sign too. And light emission. So if light's given off, a real easy example of this is um, you light something on fire. The flame is light, and it's an indication that a chemical reaction is occurring. So we use a chemical equation to describe a chemical reaction. And in general, we write the formulas for the reactants on the left side of an arrow and the formulas for the products on the right side of an arrow. Um, the reactants, the left side of the arrow, are what is present before the chemical reaction occurs. The products are what is present after the chemical reaction occurs. And you know, during a chemical reaction, what happens is the atoms in the compounds rearrange um, and attach to themselves or attach to each other um, in a different, different order. Um, well, the law of conservation of mass, which says mass can be neither created nor destroyed, um, says that because we can't change what element an atom is. Now, we're not doing nuclear chemistry here yet. Um, because we can't change what element any given atom is, we have to have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. So if we have seven atoms of carbon on the left-hand side of the equation, the reactant side, we have to end up with seven atoms of carbon on the product side. They, they have to still be there. It's just they're in a different compound probably. For example, um, this is an example right here of a um, chemical equation. Um, ammonium dichromate decomposing into um, chromium-3 oxide and water and nitrogen gas. So um, there's a couple things to notice here. Um, first of all, you should always check and make sure an equation is uh, balanced. That is, if there are the same number of atoms of every element on both sides. So if we look at this real quickly, we can see that there are 2 times 1 is 2 atoms of nitrogen on the left. 2 times 1 is 2 atoms of nitrogen on the right. Um, we have 4 times 2 is 8 atoms of hydrogen on the left. And this 4 right here, this one right there, that's what we call a coefficient. And that what that says is that there are 4 molecules of water in this case. Coefficients apply to the whole thing that comes after them, whereas these subscripts only apply to what's immediately before them. So in this, each molecule of water, this says there are two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. Remember, if there's no subscript, that means it's a one. Um, and there are four of those molecules. So we have four times two is eight atoms of hydrogen on the right. So eight here, eight there. Good. Um, next, chromium. We have two chromium atoms here, two times one, and two times one, two chromium atoms here. And finally, seven atoms of oxygen on the left. Now on the right we have three here, three times one is three, plus four molecules of water. Each molecule is one atom of oxygen, so that's four atoms there. Four plus three is seven. Yes, we have, um, the law of conservation of mass um, is satisfied. We have the same number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. We say this equation is balanced. That's what that means. Some other things to notice here about a chemical equation is we have, we don't always write them, but we have um, the state of matter um, for each of the compounds. Um, that, those are these um, 
in the parentheses after each compound. So S means solid, so these two are solids. L means liquid, so this is the liquid. G means gas, um, so the nitrogen here is a gas. Um, AQ, we don't see it in this one, but it means aqueous. Aqueous just means that that compound is dissolved in water, aqua for water. Um, and so we put different symbols above the arrow that show things that aren't involved, well, that aren't part of the balanced equation, but are important to the reaction. For this one to occur, we have to supply heat. So a little triangle in this context over the, the arrow means that heat has been supplied. We've, added, we've heated it up. Um, so there's a chemical equation. Now, let's talk about balancing chemical equations. Um, so the process that you should go through is um, if you're not already given the unbalanced equation where you're told what the, you know, you're shown what the formulas for both the reactants and the products are, um, you'll be given the words or some other way to figure it out. So write down, the first thing is write down the formulas for all of the reactants, then write an arrow, and on the right side of that arrow, write the formulas for all of the products. That's the unbalanced equation. Um, we'll learn later on in this, this module how to predict the products of some reactions once we learn how to classify chemical reactions. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. Um, so then what we do is we balance the elements on both sides of the arrow. And the way we do this is the coefficients, the numbers that are in front to the left of the formulas, those are the only numbers that we can change. You cannot change the subscripts because once you change the subscript, guys, then you're talking about a totally different compound and it's not the same chemical reaction anymore. Um, one clue that will help quite a bit sometimes is if you have an element that's by itself on either side of the arrow as one of the reactants or one of the products, um, save it for last. And the reason is, you'll see in a minute, we can put any number we want to in front of it without affecting changing all the other elements. And that ends up being a nice thing. Um, the other, last thing we need to know before we dive right into this is that the balanced equation that we end up with must have the smallest whole number coefficients at, that balance the equation. What that means is if you get the equation balanced, but every one of those coefficients um, has a common divisor greater than one, you have to reduce them all to their smallest whole numbers. All right, so let's do this. So when the following equation is balanced, what is the sum of the coefficients? So right now it'd be good for you guys to pause the video and, and give this a shot yourself. All right, welcome back. Here's how. Here's the approach. So we pick one of these compounds to, or one of the elements rather, to, to start with. I picked potassium. Um, excuse me, I picked sulfur. I didn't pick potassium. I picked sulfur because I saw three sulfurs over here, and before I put this coefficient here, there was only one on the left-hand side. So I put a three, so three times one is three. I balanced the sulfur atoms. We had three on each side. Good. But when I did that, see, I changed how many potassium atoms we have. So I did that next. I said, all right, on the left, there are um, three, pota uh, three times two is six potassium atoms. So I put this six in front of the potassium nitrate. And now I have my sulfur's balanced, three here, three here. My potassium is balanced, six here, six here. Then I said, all right, when I did that, the six gave me six nitrates. Now here's the, here's the trick, guys. Listen to this, because this is really gonna save you a lot of time and make this stuff really a lot easier. If you have a polyatomic ion, remember your table of polyatomic ions? If you have that polyatomic ion on the left and the right of the arrow, in this case we have nitrate here, nitrate here. Treat that as just one thing. Balance the nitrates. Don't dive in. You can do the nitrogens and oxygen separately, but it gets messier and it's more of a chance you're going to make a mistake. So what I did, guys, is I said, all right, this six tells me that I have six nitrates over here. I needed six over here. Well, this, before I put this two in front here, I had two, uh, three nitrates. Three outside these parentheses means there's three of everything inside of it. So I put a two here. That balance, two times three is six nitrates, six nitrates. Well, that's everything except the iron, so let's check those. Well, now at this point, guys, I have two irons, two irons. All right, everything's balanced. It's a real good idea, too, by the way, to go back at the end and just double check, go through everything. So, like, say, two irons, two irons, 
2 times 3 is 6 nitrates, 6 nitrates. 3 times 2 is 6 potassiums, 6 potassiums, 3 sulfurs, 3 sulfurs. It's balanced. Now, if you go back and look at the question, it says, what is the sum of the coefficients? So the way you answer that is you just add up all of these coefficients on the left and the right side of the arrow. And watch out. Remember the 1. So there's not a 1 here, but it's an implied 1 here. In front of the, if there's no coefficient written, that means 1. So 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 is 12. The answer to that question is 12. All right, let's do another example. Um, so you're given a, this is a combustion reaction, what we call a combustion reaction. And it says, what is the coefficient for oxygen when the following equation is balanced? Okay. So we want to balance this equation. So right now would be a good time for you guys to pause the video. And go ahead and give it a shot. All right, welcome back. And what I did, okay, now combustion reactions, well, a combustion of a hydrocarbon, which we'll talk about later, but a reaction like this. Um, if you save the oxygens for last, this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. If you save the oxygens for last, it's going to make it so much easier. Um, I, I mentioned a few minutes ago that if you have an element that's by itself, you should leave that element for last. In this case, O2, oxygen, it's, there's nothing but oxygen here. We'll save it for last. That doesn't matter. I, I picked carbon to start with. So I said, all right, this 7 means there's 7 carbons on the left. Before I put this 7 here, I needed, I only had 1, right? So I put a coefficient of 7 here. Um, then I went, remember, I'm saving the oxygens for last, so we're going to leave those alone for the moment. Then I said, all right, now I have 12 hydrogens over here on the left. Well, before I put, put this right here, I only had 2 hydrogens. So 6 times 2 is 12. I put a 6 right here. And now I have 7 carbons, 12 hydrogens on both sides. Everything's good but oxygen. So now I see, all right, over here, I've, you know, I've got two on, 3 on the left, actually, 3. If I look at the right-hand side, I have 7 times 2 is 14. 6 times 1 is 6. 14 plus 6 is 20 oxygens on the right. Now, on the left, I have 1 here, 2 here. I don't want to mess with this compound right here. If I put any coefficient in front of this compound here, everything changes, right? And that's, I have to basically start again, and I'm going to get stuck in a vicious cycle. So what I say is, all right, I already have one. I need 20. That means I need 19 more to come from the O2. So what I ask myself is, okay, what, what coefficient will give me 19 oxygen? So in other words, what times 2 is equal to 19? Or if you like algebra, 2x equals 19. What's x? 19 halves. 19 halves. Hey, it's balanced, right? So I put this 19 halves here. 19 times 2 is 19, plus 1 is 20 oxygen on the left. 20 on the left. Everything's good. The only thing here now is, guys, remember we have to have the smallest whole number coefficients. So if you get to this point where it's balanced but you have a fraction, all you do is multiply every coefficient through the whole equation through by that um, denominator by 2. So I multiply everything by 2, gives me a 2 here, 19 here, 7 times 2 is 14, 6 times 2 is 12, balanced. Let's check to make sure. 2 times 7 is 14 carbons, 14 carbons. 2 times 12 is 24 hydrogens, 12 times 2 is 24 hydrogens. 2 oxygens plus 38 is 40 oxygens here, 14 times 2 is 28 plus 12 is 40 oxygens on the right. Hey, it's all balanced. So the question was, in this time case, um, what's the coefficient for oxygen? The answer is 19. All right, so let's just look at one more. Now here, okay, we're not given the unbalanced equation, so we have to reach back into the last module and use our nomenclature to figure out what the formulas for the reactants and products are because we're just given the names. So we're told aqueous, two nit lead, aqueous lead 2 nitrate and aqueous potassium phosphate um, react. So, a couple things. Um, it's not really necessary to have the phases, but those, that's telling us that it, they're AQ, aqueous. But um, they react. That means the reactants, which means they're on the left side of the arrow, because remember, reactants are on the left, to form. So we're make, forming or making products, aqueous potassium nitrate and solid lead 2 phosphate. Right? Balanced equation for this reaction. So, pause the video, guys. Do it on your own, so that means write out the formulas, balance it. Okay, welcome back. 
So the first thing we did up here is we wrote the formulas. So lead to nitrate, nitrate is one of your polyatomic ions, NO3 minus, lead to PV with the plus two charge. When we balance the charges, get this. Potassium is K, potassium with a plus one charge. Phosphate, another one of your polyatomic ions, PO4, three minus. When we balance the charges, we get this, K3PO4. This AQ means aqueous. And potassium nitrate, Nitrate has a negative one, potassium has a positive one, charges are balanced. And um, lead to phosphate, phosphate has a negative three, lead two plus two, when we balance the charges, we get this formula, and this one's a solid. All right, so now we have the unbalanced equation. Now we start balancing the elements. And again, you know, um, pick which element you wanna start with. You know, if there's one by itself, leave it till last. Um, now here, here's a clue. Listen to this, guys. If when you're balancing an equation, you get stuck where you keep going in these cycles, like you change something, but that means you have to change something that you already wrote. So you go back and change that, and you keep going and going. Stop. Okay, just let it go. Um, start fresh. Start with a different element. Um, if you try to fix it, um, therein lies madness. Trust me. So. What I'm gonna do is, what I started with was phosphate. I said, all right, I have two phosphates. Remember, I'm treating this as one thing because it's on both sides. Two phosphates here, one here, so I put a two in front of my potassium phosphates. My phosphates are balanced. But when I did that, now I changed how many potassium. So I have two times three is six on the left. I only have one here, so I put a six in front of my potassium nitrate. All right, good. Phosphate's balanced, potassium's balanced. Um, Let's see, well, let's look at lead. Okay, so I have three leads here, only one here, so if I put a three right here, now my lead's balanced, my potassium's balanced, phosphate's balanced. Last thing is nitrate, let's check that. Three times two is six here, six times one is six, it's balanced. Um, again, let's go through and check. Three leads, three leads, two nitrates, uh, excuse me, <laughs> three times two is six nitrates, six nitrates, two times three is six potassiums, six potassiums, two phosphates, two phosphates. Yeah, it's balanced, and this is the answer. This is a balanced um, chemical equation. And that's all there is to it, guys.